What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out bad pro wrestling gimmick matches by wrestling bios. I've been wanting to check this video out for quite some time. It's been in my list of videos to check out. Um, there's been some great gimmick matches. There've been some classic ones, legendary ones. Um, ones I can think of off the top of my head is the TLC matches when WWE incorporated those those gimmick matches at that time were revolutionary you had never seen something like that you never seen ladders tables and chairs being used in that way you know there's been some great last man standing matches like the the one we seen last year where brock and uh and roman reigns at uh last year's SummerSlam. you know not all last man standing matches are good but that one will probably be one that many people remember because of just the craziness you know you have the last ride matches you have the inferno matches even though those weren't really too good i like the one with kane and mvp i thought that one was done well but you know the one with bray wyatt and the fiend not bray wyatt <laughs> i said bray wyatt and the fiend um, he was in the match but the fiend and randy orton that one not so good you know so it's it's you have some 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 heavy hitters and then you have some gimmick matches that just not good it sounds cool on paper but then when they actually execute it it's actually not that entertaining so we're gonna check this out man it's gonna be a long video so you know sit back relax get you something to eat man we're gonna go through this together um once again this is by wrestling bios let's get right into this one should be a good one. Oh, it's a little loud hope i'm uh not blowing out your, your ears man Today I'm going to talk about bad gimmick matches in pro wrestling, either specifically bad matches or match gimmicks that were just bad in concept. Pro wrestling gimmick matches can be awesome, standard one on one and tag matches are fine of course, but adding stipulations and certain win conditions not only makes things more exciting, but mm -hmm. it also helps to break up the monotony of wrestling shows by giving fans something different. Gimmick matches can also be used to end feuds, they can help with a superstar's character, they can draw in more viewers with gimmick matches being big spectacles or mm -hmm. must-see showdowns. Really, gimmick matches just make a lot of sense and they should be considered a necessity of pro wrestling, a vital part of creating wrestling shows. The thing That's... is though, and you know where this is going I'm sure, but sometimes gimmick matches turn out pretty bad and they can turn pretty bad for a lot of different reasons. Maybe the idea was awful right? out the gate, maybe the wrong guys got involved, perhaps the match was shot pretty badly mm. and the overall production was the blame, maybe it was something <laughs> people just didn't want to see. Whatever yeah. the case may be, there are plenty of bad gimmick matches throughout pro wrestling history and honestly there's more than what I originally thought. I began thinking about ideas for this video and I ended up with quite a lot of bad gimmicks and bad matches so this one's gonna get split up into a few parts just like my heels and baby faces videos. As always these are just my thoughts by the way, there's maybe some matches I didn't like that you thought were awesome and that's fine. Hearing different opinions is good so let me know your thoughts in the comments and also let me know some gimmick matches you didn't enjoy and I'll see if I've already noted them down in the next video. Alright, let's check some of these out man. Zomp- whoa, 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 whoa. I've- oh my god, I forgot about this. The zombie lumberjack match. Oh, during the pandemic era. Oh, my God, bro. You know why I forgot about this match? Because it was that awful. My brain couldn't possibly or didn't want to remember this match. This right here was awful. Truly eye rolling. Get this off my screen. Awful, bro. This one has only happened once and hopefully it never happens again. Reportedly, WWE was paid a ridiculous amount of money to cross-promote Army of the Dead, oh, a course. 2021 zombie movie that starred Dave Bautista that I didn't think was too bad actually. The WWE wouldn't just show a two minute trailer for the movie or slap the poster beside the awfully named WrestleMania Backlash logo. No, they made sure their sponsor got their money's worth by booking a zombie lumberjack. All they had to do was just show maybe a bit of the trailer and keep promoting it throughout the damn show. 
Maybe you had some little silly gimmick backstage, but you didn't have to have a damn match. This was cringe. Match. Damien Priest and The Miz had to deal with the undead around the ring as they tried to have a wrestling match, and it ended with John Morrison getting devoured and The Miz also suffering the same fate before the show moved on. That's right, the show moved on after zombies ate Morrison and Miz. You could say, hey, it's all good fun, stop being such a buzzkill and enjoy it for what it is, but in a world where you're conditioned to suspend disbelief, this one seemingly goes in the opposite direction. WWE got destroyed by critics and fans alike for booking the match, while The Miz said he was happy to get involved because it was an idea that was very much outside the box. Being outside the box doesn't make something good though, the Facts. general concept of this one sounded bad from the very beginning. Bro. The Miz and the Morrison got devoured, and you seen them on TV. <laughs> right after that. Like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot about that one. King of the Ring match, Uncensored 95. Oh, I covered this King match of the in Road. a previous video, but the King of the Road match is pretty simple. I've heard Two about this one. Two guys fighting it out on an 18 wheeler. The yeah. first guy who can ring a bell wins. It was pretty bad though because the competitors would fall all over the place while trying to maintain balance and yeah. have some sort of fight or wrestling match. This one took place at WCW Uncensored 1995, and to give WCW credit, they didn't do a terrible job of taping they tried the match. Different. In terms of camera work and overall production, it isn't all that bad. The action though is seriously lacking and it becomes very stale within the first 30 or 40 seconds. Booker Dusty Rhodes and the two competitors, Dustin Rhodes and Blacktop Bully, were fired after the match air due to WCW's no blood policy, uh, so it was a disaster every way you look at it. Damn. Oh yeah, I, I do think uh, I remember someone talking about they ended up getting fired because they were bleeding. They're like, hey, no blood, even though you're in a match that's on a moving vehicle and surrounded by fucking steel grate, anything can happen. Reverse Battle Royal TNA Wrestling. TNA would host reverse battle royals where the match starts outside the ring. Half the superstars who get in the ring will then be allowed to compete in a traditional battle royal. Generally, this means you've got a bunch of guys punching and kicking each other during the first half of the match with no real wrestling going on, and you've also got guys who seemingly yes. forget how to get into a wrestling ring as they try to add drama to something so incredibly basic. It's a terribly dumb concept yeah, in general, kinda weird. and it's not the last bad TNA gimmick we're gonna look at, unfortunately. That's weird. So you start outside the ring and then fight your way inside the ring? I don't, I don't know. Oh, the Punjabi prison match. Yeesh. Ugh. The Punjabi prison match was supposed to be very different. Court Bauer, who was working for WWE at the time, had shown Vince an unneeded death match with an exploding ring. Vince actually signed off on the idea, according to Court, and the Punjabi prison match was going to be this extremely dangerous spectacle, similar to death matches held in Japan. Court then said the idea went to Kevin Dunn, and around 10 days before the 2006 Great American Bash, the idea had been altered so much that it represented nothing from the original pitch. Wow. There were no explosions, there was a lot of bamboo, and Court said this new idea looked more like a playset based on Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Basically wow. Imagine, so it was originally supposed to be more of like an exploding death match, and I'm pretty sure Vince signed off on it. He, you know, and, and they kept it originally that it probably would have been a, a crazy spectacle, but instead we got a whole bunch of bamboo that you can barely see what's happening in the damn ring. The original idea had mutated into this monstrosity that just didn't work. That wasn't bamboo that was used. It was like the old blue steel cage only with a lick of paint. And what's oh, more, the yeah. rules of a Punjabi prison match, while not hard to understand, were unnecessarily excessive. Yeah. Here's the WWE explaining the rules of the match on their website. To win, a superstar must escape both cages, a prospect that is far easier said than done. The interior structure contains four doors, all of which are attended by a referee. 
When a superstar calls for the door to be opened, they have one minute to walk through it and into the outer structure. If they don't make it through in time, the door is shut and locked for good. If a superstar fails to make it through all four doors in the allotted time, they must climb out of the inner structure. It makes for good practice as the only way to escape the outer ring is to climb up and over it. The first superstar whose feet touch the ground wins the match. Mm -hmm. I think the Punjabi prison sure looks intimidating, but it's just not all that fun to watch matches take place inside yeah. the structure. Thankfully, though, this one seems retired for good. And yeah, let's keep it that way. <laughs> no more of that. Steiner Asylum Match, WCW. These matches were featured in my old WCW Blunder series, and for good reason, too. Scotty Steiner got his own match type in WCW that basically featured a birdcage in the middle of the ring. This space limiting structure would feature Scott Steiner and his helpless opponent or opponents trying to survive a beatdown from the big bad booty daddy. Steiner <laughs> said before the first match that the only way to win was via submission. There was no way in and no way out. But that first match also ended when Tank Abbott interfered by raising the asylum structure. Oh, and the match was also thrown out. It was a disqualification. So during what? this first ever asylum encounter where the rules of the match should be firmly established in both theory and in practice, WCW decided to completely screw everything up. <laughs> the main the issue point? with this one though was the limited space inside the asylum. There wasn't a terrible lot the guys could do in there and it was even worse when more than two guys competed in the match. <laughs> what was the point? Kennel from Hell match? Unforgiven 99? It's almost too easy to include this one, but it simply has to get brought up too. Many would say it's the absolute worst gimmick match the WWE or WWF ever put on, but I'm not so sure nowadays. I mean, that zombie lumberjack match could have overtook it as the worst match ever, Facts. but anyway. So, the Kennel from Hell is a steel cage surrounded by the Hell in a Cell. Sounds awesome so far. Yeah. In between the cage and the cell, there's a I bunch of rabid dogs this. waiting to take a bite out of the competitors yeah. should they be unlucky enough to fall between the structures. Problem was though, WWE didn't use trained dogs. They pooped around the ring, they yep. urinated around the ring, they weren't concerned about the competitors <laughs> at all. Yeah, I remember uh, someone, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know if it was wrestling by us, talking about this particular match, the dogs, they they was just in there chilling, bro. Like, you know, they they they... <laughs> They weren't worried about attacking nobody. <laughs> and instead, their owners just kind of walked around while trying to get their pooches to do something remotely intimidating. If there was a match that just used the cage and the hell in a cell, that could have been something. Instead, WWF killed the idea by including some distressed doggos, and the Kennel from Hell match became legendary for just how awful it was. <laughs> Stressing out them damn dogs. <laughs> oh man. Chris Chairs, WWE uh, TLC. When the WWE started producing TLC pay-per-views, they wanted to expand on the idea by also including table matches, ladder matches, and, and chair, uh, matches. chair matches. Table matches were already established and the win condition was a good one. Put mm -hmm. your opponent through good. a table. Ladder matches were also well established and the idea behind a ladder match was a brilliant one. Climb the ladder and retrieve the belt. So, what are you supposed to do in a chairs match? Give your opponent a comfortable seat? No, <laughs> nope. basically, using chairs as a weapon is legal, and that's it. No yeah, other weapons it. are legal, just chairs. It's dumb when you think about it, and the match type was only put together to fit into the TLC pay-per-view mm -hmm. concept. It's totally unnecessary, and it feels like a step down from a more traditional street fight or extreme rules match. Chair matches may be fine once the bell rings. It's the idea of the match that feels unnecessary to me. No, I get it. I mean, you're just using chairs, which I get it. Oh, this one, stair matches. I don't know why I just realized I said Chris matches. I, I can't read. <laughs> I just realized I said chair matches and said Chris. <laughs> yep, WWE produced a TLC pay per view named Tables, Ladders, chairs, chairs, and, and stairs. stairs. And you Ugh. guessed it, they included a stairs match. Same concept as before, only this time you can only use the ring steps. The Big Show and Eric Rowan competed in this match, and WWE actually produced a tale of the tape for the stairs with some ridiculous exaggerations, <laughs> as in the ring steps weighing a total of 275 pounds. The match was slow, it plodded along with the stairs now becoming the most dangerous weapon in WWE history. No idea why they bothered with this one, and it's not a match I care to watch again. No, 
It's not. <laughs> Graveyard match. Bash at the beach. It sounds all right in theory, but the execution was really bad for this one. The Kiss Demon vs Vampiro took place at Bash at the Beach 2000. To win the graveyard match, you had to incapacitate your opponent long enough so you could return to the arena. Now, I've heard people laugh at this because there's no way a graveyard could be right next to the arena, right? right. Well, Bash at the Beach 2000 was held in the Ocean Center in Daytona Beach, and a quick look on Google Maps shows that Pinewood Cemetery is practically right beside wow. the venue. So that part did make sense. What doesn't make sense though is WCW failing to properly light whatever set they used for this abomination properly. It's difficult to make out what's going on seeing as the demon quickly loses that torch he was holding and the only light source we have for a while is the flashlight held by referee Charles Robinson. The match <laughs> 2 is just awful. We get a game of hide and seek at the beginning. We learn that somehow the demon's head is more solid than a tombstone. We get what? to see the guys frolicking in the water well, we kind of get to see the guys frolicking in the water. It's one of those matches that could have been something, but absolutely nothing redeemable comes of it. What the hell? <laughs> Doomsday Cage Match. Uncensored. 96. Ah, the Doomsday Cage match, my my. I thought the Doomsday Cage looked great. I liked the idea of this giant imposing Jeez. three storied cage sitting at the entranceway. The match itself though was really, really sketchy to say the least and we really should have known this before it got underway. WCW didn't really explain how the match was going what to work until just before the competitors entered the stage structure at Uncensored 96. We were told that Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage would have to survive different levels and segments of the cage in order to win the match, with their final challenge waiting for them in a ring right at the ground level. But nothing else was really explained. Are the babyfaces supposed to pin or submit their opponents at each level? Where do the heels go after getting defeated? Can yeah. guys from previous levels join in during subsequent That's levels? So the fine details were purposefully so left confusing. out and you can just tell that absolutely no one had a clue what was going on. It turned into an absolute mess as Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage destroyed 8 heels in one match. Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Lex Luger, the Taskmaster, the Barbarian, Ming, and uh, Zeus in the Ultimate Solution all fell at the hands of the Mega Powers. Add in the Booty Man for some more absolute nonsense, and you've got yourself a match for the ages, ladies and gents. What? Check they, it. They beat everybody. <laughs> what? We're going to go through each level and beat all you guys. <laughs> what? My uncensored 96 video if you want that's, to see how it all went on. That's fucking funny. They beat everybody. Blind. Oh, yeah. I've seen this one. Blindfold match. Let's take away the guy's vision and put them in a wrestling ring. Uh, Why this was done so many times is beyond me, but the match never works. This one doesn't need an explanation, but no one will ever call any blindfold match an all-time classic or even good for that matter. No one will ever convince me either that there's fun to be had in these matches because no. they were all pretty bad. The standout probably being Jake Roberts versus Rick Martel at WrestleMania 7. Here you've got two great superstars competing in the biggest show of the year. Why the fuck would you limit their abilities by putting them in a dumb gimmick match is beyond yeah. me. There may be people out there who enjoy these and again, you may think I'm being too harsh and it's just a bit of fun, but I just don't find them fun to watch at all, no matter how many comedy spots are used. Yeah, not, not a big fan of those type of matches. Uh, World War 3 match, WCW World War 3. I've mentioned before that I absolutely love the idea of World War 3 matches and hearing about 60 guys Whoa. competing in three rings sounded insane to me. WCW pay-per-views were hard to come by around these neck of the woods during this era, but I became obsessed about seeing the first World War 3 match after Jeez. reading about it in an old Parslam magazine. Quick side note, Parslam magazine in the UK was awesome back in the day. Anyway, I got into tape trading a little also through Parslam magazine in their little pen friend section and an absolute hero sent me a copy of World War 3 1995. To say I was disappointed would be an understatement. Damn. I think I told this story before, but not only was it bad enough trying to watch the action on these three tiny screens, but the good man who sent me the tape probably copied it from a copy that was a copy from another copy. <laughs> the questionable tape quality mixed with WCW's production of World War III matches <laughs> left a lot to be desired, and all my expectations got flushed right down the toilet. 
The idea is a sound one, but I'm surprised someone didn't stop and think, hey, maybe this will be hard to broadcast. Maybe we should rethink this, you yeah. know? They did get it right by putting the last bunch of wrestlers into a single ring, but by that time, you're just watching a standard battle royal. So all in all, I've more of a personal dislike for this one due to this wild image I got in my head about how this would play out. WCW did deliver on what they said, but they didn't think about the production of such a match for viewers at home. Yeah, this like damn near your whole roster in three separate rings just going at it and then trying to broadcast that i mean there's a lot going on at one time it's kind of hard to get invested you know junkyard invitational bash at the beach 99 the Junkyard Invitational took place at WCW Bash at the Beach 99 and there was a strange mix of wrestlers in the match. Luchadors like La Parca and Ciclope, hardcore brawlers like Public Enemy and Sandman. Sandman was given the abysmal name of Hack in WCW by the way. You had technicians such as Lord Stephen Regal. There was a real mishmash of wrestlers here that already grew concerns for viewers in regards to WCW's upcoming hardcore Whoa. division. He also had a lot of stunt effects in this match that didn't go according to plan. Delayed explosions fires that kind of thing and Whoa. the whole match was hard to see with a helicopter spotlight being used as the main light source even worse apparently quite a few guys got legitimately injured in the match due to wcw filming this thing in an actual junkyard yes yeah. they did use not so special effects but most of the weapons and props were real Jeez. a lot of effort for very little payoff it was hard to watch from a production standpoint it just felt like wcw were playing catch up with their hardcore division and starting off in one of the worst ways possible i mean kudos to them to actually wrestling in a real junkyard but you know you're in a real junkyard using the real parts of cars and stuff and someone's bound to get legitimately injured <laughs> this is Exploding barbed wire, AEW. <laughs> oh boy. Let me say first of all that I felt really bad for the guys oh involved in this God. match and the work that was put into the match before the explosion was good. There was a lot of physicality mixed in with some good storytelling in regards to the men involved, but my God, the end of that match. There's never Horrible. been a big American promotion who put on a match like this before. FMW in Japan, for example, were well known for these kind of ultra violent uh -huh. matchups. So seeing an exploding barbed wire match in a promotion like AEW was very, very intriguing. Even for company detractors, this one had the potential to get talked about for a very long time. Again, I thought the match was really good up until the end, because you see, if the match reached the 30 minute mark, then the whole ring was going to explode. Basically, every explosive would get detonated and wrestling ring go boom. The match featured John Moxley and Kenny Omega. It reached the 30 minute mark. Moxley's all alone in the ring. Eddie Kingston, a wrestling bios viewer by the way, so please take this well my friend, dashes down to the oh, ring to cover Moxley no, in yeah. one of the most heroic and brave acts a man could possibly do. And then the ring exploded with fireworks and nothing else. This earth shattering explosion was comparable to a WWF wrestler's <laughs> pyro during the new generation era. It was oh, a small step up from Gilbert's sparkler God. entrance. It was so bad that the company got quite a lot of flack and AEW <laughs> had to come up with an explanation fast. In the end, they went with Kenny Omega playing a big old prank and placing dud explosions around the ring. It was probably the best explanation they could have came up with, to be honest. Yeah. The problem was, though, the commentators and Eddie had no choice but to play it off as legit when the quote-unquote explosion went off, so salvaging the bit was also kind of moot. <laughs> oh, yeah, nah. Even they have made fun. John Moxley's definitely made fun of that match because that was just... That wasn't it. There was no real explosion, so, you know. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> Electrified cage match. TNA Lockdown 07. Electrified Whoa. cage matches had been done before by using jumper cables and electrocuting guys for real. It's nah. incredibly dangerous, of course. No, so you're not going to no. see anything like that in promotions who have decent TV deals and sponsorships. You're also not going to get guys who actually care about their well-being doing such matches because, no. you know, you could get seriously hurt or you could even die nah, if yeah. things went the wrong way. It kind of makes you wonder why TNA would book an electric cage match between Team 3D and LAX in the first place, but by god they did it and it sucked. Not only did we get some ridiculous acting when someone touched the cage, but we also got guys seemingly forgetting they had this electrified cage surrounding them. 
Wrestlers would perform moves as normal on the mat instead of throwing them into the cage, and Brother Ray even asked for a table to get put in the ring, because flimsy wood is 100 times more effective at hitting your opponent as opposed to 10,000 volts of electricity. Finally though, Hernandez remembered that this structure could actually do some real damage, so he tossed Yvonne into the cage and check it out, the lights flickered, there were no sparks or anything, no pyro, the lights just fl- he sold. He put on his academy performance on that one. He <laughs> with no damn electricity on that. Oh, Devon flopped around like a fish. A pair of rubber gloves is all you need to climb the cage too. You can even sit on top of the cage with your balls touching it, and you <laughs> still won't get hurt. Homicide takes a bump into the cage too, and it's just as bad as Devon's. A terrible match that makes the AEW exploding barbed wire death match look like a masterpiece. That was, what, that was awful, bro. Oh my god, that was awful. Catch as catch can, WCW. Sold out. This is another one that sounds good on paper, but we have got a guy completely forgetting the rules and the match ends prematurely because of it. Even worse is the fact that it was Dean Malenko who dropped the ball, a guy who was always highly reliable. A lot of changes were made to WCW Sold Out 2000 due to injuries. Jeff Jarrett and Chris Benoit were originally going to face off in a triple threat theater series of matches, with one of those matches being a dungeon rules match. The ropes would get removed and you could win via pinfall, submission, or throw throwing your opponent out of the ring. This match did sound good, but Benoit got put in the main event title match when Bret Hart had to forfeit the title while Double J was out due to a concussion. Billy Kidman would wrestle three different guys instead. The dungeon match was replaced with a catch as catch can match where the ropes would stay around the ring, but you could still lose if your feet touched the floor. Well, didn't Dean Malenko completely forget about this and he left the ring after about two and a half minutes? Yeah, Dean went out to regroup and the referee oh. had no choice but to award the victory to Billy Kidman. Dean's head wasn't in it at all, there was a lot of turmoil backstage and Dean was getting ready to leave the company along with Benoit and others. Damn. This catch as catch can match would be his final match in WCW and it was such a bad way for him to go out after putting on good to great matches every time he stepped into a WCW Damn. ring. He forgot the rules. All right, that will do it for this one. But oh I man, this was a great one to talk about. And as always, I'm open for suggestions. Let me know in the comments what gimmick matches you didn't like or what ideas fell flat when the bell rung, and I'll include them in a future video. Again, there may be some of these matches that you enjoyed, and that's okay. Trust me, there's matches out there that people like, but I do, so it's all right to have differing opinions. Use the comment section to let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, and take care. Hey man, this was a great one. Y'all go subscribe to the homie. Uh, I believe I am already subscribed to him. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a like. Y'all go subscribe to him, man. Makes great videos. This was dope. Going down memory lane or even checking out some stipulations or gimmick matches. I didn't even know was a thing. Like the three rings with all those wrestlers. Did not know that was a thing. That's crazy, man. So comment down below, let me know what's the worst wrestling gimmick match you've ever seen. Let me know down below, doesn't matter what company, let me know the worst gimmick match you've ever had the unfortunate time of looking at. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel, Road to 150k, and I am still getting the speed of YouTube wrestling champ world. Appreciate y'all kicking me, see y'all next one, peace.